Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. Tonight we have a full show, and I'm glad you joined us. We're going to start out with Open Road Learning Community for Teens. With us representing Open Road is Alan Burns, who's the founder and executive director. Welcome, Alan. Thank you. And Lucas Cole, who is a current teen member at Open Road. Thanks for being here, Lucas. Yeah, no problem. So, Alan, uh, Open Road is a fairly new school. Yes. Do you call it a school? Not really, A, a learning community. Learning so community. So it, it is different. Um, but this is an alternative for kids um, who want to do something other than the traditional school. Right. Can you give me a little bit of history in, um, as to how this started, why it started, why you're involved with sure. it? Sure. Um, I've been, I had been a, a public English teacher, public school English teacher for eight years. Mm -hmm. um, and... Over the years, I just I, I felt like I ran into too many kids who I really liked. I mean, they were bright and they were energetic in a setting that was not necessarily the classroom, mm -hmm. um, or in ways that were not necessarily around what we were doing in class. Um, but really bright kids, and then you'd be chasing them around to get their work done and chasing <laughs> them around and, and you know get their things made up before their grades were due and that sort of thing. And it felt. It didn't feel like these kids were getting a great experience. Mm. Um, I mean, I was certainly doing everything that I could do as a classroom teacher. Right. But school for them wasn't something that, it wasn't giving them what they really were looking for. It wasn't giving them something that felt meaningful to them. And it was very clear that that was right. the case. So I started, um, I started thinking about other ways that I could be working with kids and, and, and helping kids learn. Um, and I came across... Um, a place called North Star, which is in Massachusetts. I came across an organization called Arrow, which is an alternative education resource organization. Right, I, right. I think you've talked about that. Yeah, before. I'm familiar, and they've actually been on here right, before. Right, yeah. right, yeah. yeah. Um, so I found them, and through them, I found just a Huffington Post article that a guy had written, who is the executive director of a place called North Star. I can maybe show. Oh yeah, yeah. Hold that up for the yeah. camera to take a look at there. Learning is natural. School is optional, and that's from North Star Self-Directed Learning for Teens. Right? Yes. Yeah. So that that's a that's a great motto right there. It is. And they won't let us use it, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> it's already been taken. You'll come up with your own. We'll come I'm up sure with you have got a, few. a bright guy like We've Lucas here who can help that's you right. come up with a new motto. Yeah, that's right. So. So I took inspiration from what they did. I mean, basically, I, I looked at, at their organization and their website. I'd never known that anything like that existed. Um, and as I learned more, and I just said, I need, to, I need to talk to these guys. I think this is what I want to do. And so I got in touch with, with Ken, who's the executive director, and uh, that basically was the genesis of Open Road. Um, it's, a, it's a huge project to get a school started. Or yeah. to get a learning community started. Well, you know, it, yeah. it is. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a slightly less big project to get a non-school learning community started. We don't have to, uh, we're not accredited. We don't have to deal with a lot of the same issues. We don't have to start up with a full staff of teachers. I mean, there's a lot it's of things. It's not considered a charter It's school. not. No, we're okay. totally outside the state's, okay. um, you know. Uh, Their jurisdiction. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. It's, it's, okay. So what happens actually is, is Lucas and the other kids who are at Open Road are homeschoolers. Okay. Okay. They so, probably never have been before. Many of them, some will, mm -hmm. but, but most mm -hmm. of them won't. It's the way that they cannot have to be in school as homeschoolers, they can either be schooled literally at home or they can be schooled through some kind of tutor, and we basically serve that function. Okay. Now, and I want to get back to more about the things that you do at Open Road. Sure. But, but Lucas, tell me, how did you end up getting involved with Open Road? How did you find out about it, and, and why are you attracted to this kind of learning? Well, that's a very long story, actually. Um, I was in public schooling, actually, my entire life, and um, I wasn't bad at it for a long time, like especially through my middle school years, I did pretty Got well good grades, and, yeah. and, and I kept up with my work. I mean, but towards the end, especially in my sophomore, my uh, junior year, it wasn't so much that I didn't know what to do. I mean, I knew what to do. I'd been doing it for so many years now. I just felt like I was on this repetition that mm -hmm. really just made it feel like... You were the mouse on the, on the treadmill kind of thing or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was, it was really just felt energy wasting and uh, there was many other things that I wanted to do with my time and I had dreams, I had things I wanted to do and I just felt like my dreams were really being crushed, really. That, that's interesting because I know a lot of kids find a hard time finding what, what they're passionate about right. and some kids it takes them a long time but if you have that passion and you've found it already, it does probably seem like a waste of time to be able to, to, to go through all the steps that you have to just to graduate when really you could be going for it right then. Exactly. And, you know, after I left, 
Um, I, well, I didn't start the filming company that I'm doing now. It was mainly more of, I started towards the end of my school career. And then after I left, all of a sudden, I had all this free time, so I tried to figure out, okay, what am I gonna do? Mm -hmm. So I instantly started trying to make us look better. I started trying to learn new techniques, tried to learn new things about filming, things like that. And then all of a sudden, we started getting deals, like paid deals. Wow. Yeah. So you're actually making some money off of your passion. Oh, yeah, and I'm only 17, so hey, it's, nice it looks job. pretty cool. Nice job, yeah. So what kinds of things are you doing? Uh, like right now, I'm, uh, I, we do projects all the time, not necessarily to make money. See, one of the things about my company, Simply Insane Films, is mainly we try to focus on finding people that necessarily aren't interested in the pay of it, but more in the art of it. Okay. So people that we have a passion for filmmaking and video and that kind of thing? Is yeah, that... right. So necessarily, if we weren't making any money at all, I'm not saying we wouldn't do it. We'd still definitely be doing it. So, the, but the money's a nice perk. The money is definitely <laughs> that a nice perk. That helps you keep going. Yeah, and it helps us improve our right, performance. Right, right. So, Alan, how does this fit in with Open Road? His passion for, for uh, filmmaking, how does that work with your schoolwork? Well, I'll, I, I had Lucas in class, actually, my last year of teaching, last year, um, in an advanced English class, and he did, he did well. But I would never... And this is really true. I would never have guessed at the talent he's got or at the passion he had. I didn't even know that he sort of had this brought out in a normal because I, right, setting. I mean, I've got him for, we had, I think, 70 minute classes or something and I have him in there and we'd be doing our literature and our writing and that's all important and great stuff. Right. And, you know, but um, he's sitting there burning with this desire to be doing this other stuff that he happens to be really good at, uh -huh. that happens to be a field, as you know, that, that has you know, tons and tons of opportunity. Limitless opportunities. Right. Yes. I mean, he knows he's a reader. He, you know, he, he's, he, he has the skills that he needs to go out there in life. And mm -hmm. I, I question sometimes whether every single kid that we educate needs to learn all of the same things. I don't know that everybody needs to, to learn Algebra 2. Mm -hmm. I think everybody I needs basic. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I learned it once, <laughs> forgot it really quickly thereafter, right? I mean, and I don't know that everybody needs to read lots of Shakespeare either, and I'm an English teacher. Right. So, so it's <coughs> not so much, it, this isn't so much for kids that aren't necessarily making it in other situations. It's for kids who maybe aren't living up to their potential in other situations. Yeah, or, 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 or it really, is, I think it's for almost any kind of kid. I mean, there's the kid who feels really unchallenged, mm -hmm. um, the really maybe gifted and talented we'd call them, but who just, they want to be moving three times faster than right, school right. can allow them to do. And how hard it must be for a teacher who has kids of all different levels, all different mm -hmm. abilities, and try to put them into one classroom and then keep it going and make it challenging for everybody. It just isn't going to happen. Well, it's, it's it, really I mean, talented teachers, it's, it's, it's possible. But it's a lot of work. But it's not, I don't, I don't know that it's always possible with every kid. And you're certainly not reaching every kid and getting to know every kid right. in a way that you're going to be able to recognize something in them and draw it out of them. And so it's been a real thrill for me, actually, as, a, as, as someone who loves helping kids learn, um, to work with Lucas in this setting as opposed to the last setting. You right. know, the last one, it was all about here are the assignments, here's what you need to do, and here's how, you know, and, and he would do that and we'd work on it and, you know, the limited way that, that we can in school. He's got four other classes and I've got four other classes and it's just right. you know, part of my right. day. Now it's... Lucas gets to talk to me about what he's interested in. I get to brainstorm with him about what we could do with those interests. Um, we get to connect him to people. We've got him working with two uh, Hollywood professionals who happen to be Portland-based. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah, that works out. Huh? You know, who were just contacts yeah. of a friend of mine and a, and a guy who's working with me exactly. on the project. That thing we were talking about. Exactly, yeah. right, all about right. That. And that would not have happened in school. No, of it course it would It just wouldn't have happened there. And, and that's what Open Road is really designed to, to help make possible um, for kids. So Lucas, what, what does your typical day look like? I mean, you're not going to, you know, right. English, uh, advanced English, and then Algebra 2. What, what is your day right, look like? Right, and thank goodness. Yeah. No more Algebra 2. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, let's see. Uh, I get up normally around 8 o'clock, which is every high schooler's dream. I'm going to yeah. tell you that right now. <laughs> but the thing is, I would find myself staying up really late, even during high school, just to get homework done, things like that, because I had all the filming and the acting to do during the day. It was like, because I wasn't going to let my dream die. That was the last thing I was going to do. So when I did finally get out, um, it seems like my schedule is a bit, it's quite nice now. Normally, I'll get up around 8, take a shower, you know, do all the regular stuff, eat breakfast. And I'll usually um, actually work on scripts until like noon, do stuff like that. Um, then I'll work on, of course, 
schoolwork after that because you know it's a good transition. You know, typing up scripts, you know, you can transition right into schoolwork just like yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, he's studying for the GED, oh, which good. will help him get financial aid as a non high school graduate. That'll be a way for him to get financial aid to start a community college if that's what he wants to do good. or at a four year school. Good. Good. So. And then normally after that, I have things like seeing my friends, doing film work, all that. Really, it's almost like it's you're having, able, I have a life. I have a life. And you're able to manage your time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Having a life is a really big part of what we do also. And, and, and I think so much of um, the way we conceive of school is that we are preparing you for your future. And we constantly hammer that message home. We're preparing you for your future. Um, we believe that what happens in your life today mm -hmm. is preparation for your future. Having a meaningful and productive and powerful life today is preparation for your future. Much better preparation than sort of skating through these classes that maybe you have some interest in this one but not that one, but you gotta right. be there anyway. Right. You know, sort of doing the routine and following the, jumping through the hoops and following the line. Yeah. Um, so the fact that, that he's able to sort of dive into all of these things that he's so interested in. That's great. Um, that's getting a life, I mean, that's really what it is. So, so tell me, Ellen, we, you, have, you don't have a physical location right now. The, um, right. Homeschooling right now for Lucas. Um, you're looking for a physical location? We're getting there. You're getting we're there? We're getting there. Okay. We need to, I mean, we're, we're, we incorporated in November. Lucas joined us in January as our first okay. uh, teen. So we are slowly getting there. So you, you know. have a campaign going now to try to raise funds. We do, yes. So tell me a little bit about that. Okay, well, uh, there's a, a brand new uh, crowdfunding platform called Incited uh, that is geared towards education. It's uh, crowdfunding for education. And uh, they're good friends of ours. And so we are actually their first, um, their first campaign. Wonderful. And so we've got a $7,500 fundraising campaign through them right now which is in progress. We've got about, I want to say, 19 days left in the campaign. We're about two-thirds of the way there um, and hoping to hit it and surpass it, really. Wonderful. Yeah. This 15 minutes is going really fast. I want to make sure we cover everything. Sure. I know you have a celebration for Open Road going on yes. Friday night yes. um, at Old Town Pizza on MLK. Yes. I, I hope to be there. I hope I'm you will be there as well. And yes. that's just kind of a celebration of what, how far you've come so far. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Pretty much. Um, and if people want information, uh, there will be information sessions about Open Road, um, and they can go to your Facebook page or website yes. to get information about that. Yes. Um, what? Tell me. Tell me just in the little time we have left. What? Um, what's, what do people need to know about Open Road, or what would you like to convey about about this? In the little bit of time we have left, I think it's it's important for I think a lot of parents and teens I think mm -hmm. to understand that school is like North Star says so well, school is optional. Learning mm -hmm. is, na we all are natural learners. Um, school is not the only way to get what you need. And it's not, the diploma is not necessary for college. Kids mm -hmm. have been homeschooling for 30 plus years and colleges have gotten more and more used to it. Homeschoolers do extremely well in college. So the diploma is important. It, it doesn't carry the weight that it once did, no, certainly in the labor force. Yeah. And the, mar the whole labor market is changing so much. I mean, what the, the skills that are needed are so, diverse, dynamic. I mean, kids really need to be able to think on their feet and, and have transferable skills and be able to make those, transfer, uh, th those transfers really easily. Um, and school doesn't necessarily help them do that. And I think that following their own passions, finding them, mm -hmm. you know, which a lot right. of them finding need them to do that first. Then, yeah. Lucas didn't. A lot of kids do. And how do you feel about that, Lucas? Do you, you feel like you've, you've found your passion that this is the right path for you? Well, I'm going to say right now, out of all the decisions I have made in my life, starting my company, things like that, I think really joining Open Road was probably one of the best decisions I was able to make. And I thank my parents for, of course, <laughs> allowing me to make the decision. Good, good. But, like, it's almost, granted, it, things aren't exactly as I expected it, but they're definitely better than I expected it. They, good. Well, and you're, um, in, you're kind of in on the ground floor. You, you probably will be able to help make those changes. You know, I imagine it's kind of a, 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 a fluid thing where things change as you see what works and what doesn't Absolutely. work. Absolutely. And, and every single, you know, student that we get changes open road okay. because we're completely okay. focused on, on them. Okay. Well, we're out of time. Thank you both, Lucas and Alan, okay. so much for yeah. being here. Thanks for having us. Oh, it's my pleasure. And if you're interested in finding out more about Open Road, please go to their Facebook page, their website. There will be more information coming up. You can check it out. If this is right for your kid or for you, then be sure to check it out. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more of Community Hotline in just a moment.